Hey guys, Aris, Hardware Busters. Today we have two products, the Arctic Freezer 50 and Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo. Arctic is known for its affordable but competent cooling products. In this video we will look at two air coolers from this brand, one high-end and one belonging to the mid segment. And so let's start first with the unboxing of the Arctic Freezer 50 before we proceed to the Arctic Freezer 34. The box is nice and large enough. Uh, don't take into account the badge mentioning the two-year warranty since this is an error. Uh, this cooler is supported by a six-year warranty which someone will expect from a product that costs $75 or 70 euros. Yeah, that's quite expensive for an Arctic cooling cooler. The first thing you will see once you open the box is a piece of paper with a QR code which will lead you to the online manual. Arctic thought to save paper and don't provide the physical manual, which is the right thing to do if you ask me. The cooler follows the two tower design and comes with both fans pre-installed, meaning less work for you. There is lots of plastic covering the aluminum heatsink, making it look even larger than it is. The exterior design reminds me of Corsair's air cooler, the A500, which I have to evaluate at some point as well. The plastic pieces on the sides help keep a direct airflow through the two towers of the cooler, so they do their part in increasing thermal performance. At the same time, these plastic bits help in reducing noise output as well. There's HB lighting at the top plastic part, which lights two thin strips and Arctic's logo in the middle. In case your mainboard now doesn't have an AHB controller, there's a version of this product that bundles such a controller but there's always a but i know you will pay ten dollars more the two fans don't have the same dimensions the intake fan measures 120 millimeters across and the fan in the middle is larger with 140 millimeters diameter the intake fan is embedded into the shroud so you cannot place it and the middle fan is also attached to the top cover this means that you cannot replace easily at least and without any modding which is my best part both fans and this is a notable design flaw because fans don't live forever like heat sinks both fans uh, use hydraulic bearings so uh, which keep noise output low and also provide a long lifetime this is something at least because of the large dimensions and the plastic parts fixed positions there can be compatibility issues with some ram modules you won't be able to combine this cooler with any module with head speeders with more than 37.5 mm height. So you should keep this in mind. A large chassis is also required to accommodate the Freezer 50 because of its increased height at 166 mm. Moreover, the 1 kilo 160 grams weight, yeah, this is way too much. Uh, makes this cooler among the heaviest, so you have to be careful during the installation process. At the base of the Freezer 50, there are six heat pipes which come in direct contact with the CPU's head speeder, meaning that this cooler follows the so called HDT design HDT, direct heat pipe, direct touch. The base's finish is good, but you should still use more thermal compound than the usual to ensure good contact between the CPU's head speeder and the cooler's contact base. Arctic recommends applying the thermal compound in four lines running across the heat pipes for optimal contact and best performance, so you should follow its advice. A splitter powers both fans, so you will only have to use one header on the mainboard. The other cable is connected to an HB heater given that your mainboard has one, of course. The box is much smaller compared to the one that houses the Freezer 50. The white color design also looks nice. What makes an impression here is the 10 year warranty information on the box. While the more expensive Freezer 50 is covered by a 6 year warranty. Hmm. Normally it should be the other way around. Once you open the box, you will be greeted once again by the piece of paper with the QR code leading to the user's manual. The Freezer 34 comes in six 
color combinations, but for me, the all-white version is the best looking one. The matching color fans look great too. This is a single tower cooler with four heat pipes that directly touch the CPU's IHS, integrated head speeder. The pair of 120mm diameter fans is attached to the heatsink through metallic clips. I prefer another mounting method, but this could further increase the price from €46 or $50 to even higher levels, so the product will have a hard time competing with stronger coolers in this price range. According to Arctic Cooling now, this product aims for a higher price per performance ratio, so every dollar or every cent counts. The fans are installed into a push-pull configuration and are controlled through a PWM signal. They use fluid dynamic bearings, so besides quiet, they will also have a long life. Both fans can be connected together, so only one cable leaves from the cooler. Because of the compact dimensions, even with two fans installed, RAM compatibility is excellent and you won't have any trouble even with modules that have tall heat speeders. The Freezer 34 Duo weighs 764 grams with both fans installed, so it is notably lighter than the Freezer 50. Its height is lower too at 157mm and the same goes for its length and width. Besides the necessary mounting accessories, you will also find a packet of MX4 compound in the bundle, which is suitable for one use only though. I prefer small, a small syringe for the thermal compound, which is easier to use rather than this packet. But I guess it was less expensive to use a packet. The installation is straightforward and it's a good thing that several parts are the same for both Intel and AMD sockets. For the later sockets you will have to use the stock backplate while there is one provided in the bundle for Intel ones. Uh, the provided package of MX4 thermal compound is enough for the single use. Let's watch Bo now installing the cooler and actually do some work here in the lab. Bo didn't have a problem, yeah, that's a new one, while installing the Freezer 34 Duo on our test mainboard. Everything went smooth, thankfully. 
As with FISA 50, you will use the provided backplate if you have an Intel CPU. For AMD sockets, you will just use the stock backplate. I use a high-end sound analyzer and microphone, both provided by Brueling Care. All noise measurements are conducted inside the hemianhoic chamber with a device under test placed 1 meter in a straight line away from the microphone. Low noise output for both coolers, as you can see in the graph, but uh, other air coolers are notably quieter. And I'm talking about the Be Quiet coolers. Fan noise, 100% fan speed. About the same noise output with a Noctua D15 for both active coolers. All in ones are notably loud as you can see in the chart. Way louder. Thermal performance. We use a custom made loader able to deliver up to 500 watts to conduct all heatsink and all in one testing. Let's start with the all fans outputting 20 dBA. Both coolers perform poorly at such low fan speeds with a 400 watt load. With 200 watts, performance is much better. 25 dBA. The Freezer 50 starts to build a considerable distance with Freezer 34 once fan speed is increased with 400 watts load. Still, it cannot get close to the Nocto D15 or the D15S. With 400 watt, we notice good performance for Freezer 50, but the Freezer 34 is struggling to keep the high thermal load in control. With 200 watts, it goes very well though, managing to beat 3 strong all-in-ones. Fence at 35 dBA, with a 500 watt load, the Freezer 34 just cannot handle such a high thermal load. So we had to end the test earlier not to damage our loader. And who will make it again? <laughs> the Freezer 50 stands very well, beating several all-in-ones. A note here now, the Freezer 34 performs notably worse with its fan spinning faster and outputting 35 dBA noise compared to 30 dBA. How this is possible? Well, this happens because at very high airflow, the top parts of the heat pipes cool down faster than what the cooler can take under these conditions. So the wick is full of liquefied steam and there is no room for the new steam rising up from the base. This is called condenser flooding and notably affects performance as you already saw in the performance graphs. 100% fan speed. At full speed, the big freezer is close to the D15S, but the cap with the D15, which also uses two fans, is immense. With 400 watts, the performance cap is notably smaller. On the other hand, Freezer 34 cannot keep up, showing that such high loads are just out of its league. The big freezer copes with a load and this is shown by the relatively short period needed to reach its steady state. On the other hand, uh, Freezer 34 cannot cope with a 400 watt load, so it takes a long time to steady state and practically never stabilizes since I had to end the test before it finishes. It was, it was just keeping on on increasing in temperature. Overall performance starts with 400 watts load. Let's start with a 30 dBA fan noise output. The big freezer performs decently, but it cannot threaten Noctua's coolers, both of them. Related performance with 35 dBA. Because of condenser flooding, the performance of the freezer 34 under high loads and full fan speed is low. I also tried with other fans with similar maximum speed and the results were identical as I expected because the problem remains. On the other hand, the big freezer performs well. 
The Nocta D15 and D15S are not listed in this graph because their max noise output doesn't reach 35 dBA. That's impressive. It's even lower than that. The latest performance, 100% fan speed. This is where things start to get interesting. The performance difference between the D15 and Freezer 50 is 10%, so it's quite large, especially if you consider that the D15 is a bit less noisy at full fan speed. The Freezer 34 is in the last place because it cannot cope with high thermal loads. At lower loads, it performs well though. Performance per dBA, 400 watts load and 100% fan speed. Decent performance for the Freezer 50 and low score, very low for the Freezer 34. Performance per dollar, 100% fan speed, 400 watts load. The Freezer 50 manages to beat the big knock to accumulates in this chart, achieving second place. On the contrary, the Freezer 34 is in the second worst place since it cannot handle well increased thermal loads. Overall performance charts with 200 watt load. Since the Freezer 34 is for lower TDP CPUs, I made some more overall performance charts with 200 watt load results. The Freezer 34 performs much better with 200 watts, and the same applies to Freezer 50, which is not far away from the top all in ones and the Noctua D15. Performance per dollar fans at 30 dBA, 200 watts load. The top score here is for the Freezer 34. While with 400 watts load, let me remind you that it was in the second place from the bottom. You see, such a huge difference with half the load. Arctic Freezer 50 is suitable for high voltage CPUs and it performs quite well, achieving a top performance per buck or euro ratio. Moreover, it is not noisy even at full frame speed. It has a huge footprint though. Furthermore, you cannot call it affordable at 75 euros. And the Nocto D15 achieves notable low temperatures and it doesn't cost way more. Lastly, its build quality is high and it also uses two good fans, featuring hydraulic bearings. Another significant letdown is that you cannot replace the fans since they are connected to the cooler's plastic housing. And this is a bummer, of course. If you have a lower voltage CPU, the Freezer 34 won't have a problem keeping up, as it did in my test where I push all coolers to the edge. Yeah, this is what I do. I should probably create a new section, I think, in future cooler reviews with 200 watt or 250 watt maximum load instead of 500 watts. I don't know, if more uh, coolers like the Freezer 34 start to arrive in the lab, I will seriously consider that. Nonetheless, in this review, I provide 200 watt test results in my chart so you can check how this cooler performs at lower loads. So the Freezer 34 is ideal for a mid-level CPU with not sky-high TDP and thanks to its small footprint, RAM and GPU clearance is excellent. On top of that, it won't empty your wallet and it looks nice as well. Let's go to the pros and cons. We will start with the Arctic Freezer 50. Pros. Good performance, high build quality, hydraulic bearing fans, silent operation, RGB lighting, nice external design, MX4 thermal compound in the bundle, and single connection for both fans. Cons. Not so affordable, huge dimensions, possible RAM and GPU clearance problems, and not replaceable fans. Active Freezer eSports Duo 34. Pros. Affordable, for its features at least. Compact dimensions, nice external design, high build quality, FTP fans, silent operation, MX4 thermal compound in the bundle, and single connection for both fans. Cons. Not ideal for high budget CPUs and lower performance with increased airflow under high loads. So this was the review of two Arctic uh, cooling products. Leave a comment, share the video, thumbs up if you liked it, and see you in one of our next videos. Bye bye!